metro station. It confirms the reports of passengers who said they waited more than 30 minutes for help. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser has ordered a review of the response. She expects a preliminary report in about two days. A second report will be released next week. There are still questions that remain that, that I want um, answers to, uh, including, we, I mentioned earlier that we did not know the time that the train actually became disabled on the tracks when uh, the time that the first smoke appeared. 61-year-old Carol Glover died and dozens more were sickened by the smoke. A memorial service for Glover will be held Monday morning at 10 o'clock at Capitol Hill Baptist Church in Northeast Washington. Tonight, we're learning more about the first lawsuit to be filed in the Metro smoke incident. Seven on Your Side investigator Chris Papp spoke to the man who's filing that suit. Chris is live at the Metro headquarters in Northwest Washington. Chris, as you reported yesterday, these claims could cost Metro millions of dollars. Well, absolutely. These lawsuits are, are soon going to start piling up. So today we learn that the first lawsuit will officially be filed tomorrow. And then just a few minutes ago, ABC 7 learned that six more of those passengers have already signed on with that same law firm with the man who is filing tomorrow. Now, speaking of that man, he said today that he thought that he was going to die on that train when it started filling with smoke so much. In fact, that he wrote a text to his mother and to his two kids saying goodbye. I just didn't see any way that we were going to get out of there because the, the smoke was encapsulating and all you could see out the windows was dark. At about 3.30 Monday afternoon, while stuck inside a smoke-filled metro train near the LaFont station, Malbert Rich yeah. thought his life was over. Uh, it was sort of surreal. With all hope gone, he squinted through the smoke and wrote a goodbye text to his two kids and mother. I told my, my mother that, uh, that I, I love being her, her um, son, and I, and I told my kids I love being their dad, and I told them, um, told them, you know, uh, cry a little bit, and then, then, then move on, because I'm, I'm somewhere better. According and, uh, to Rich's attorney, the 53-year-old New Yorker was just released from Georgetown University Hospital, and he is suing to make Metro safer. He'd also lay compensation, though he wouldn't say how much, or discuss his injuries. And while injuries on the Metro do happen, they are rare. According to federal transportation data obtained by Seven on Your Side, from 2010 to 2013, DC Metro reported 14 injuries for every 100 million customer trips. Compared to similar sized markets, that's fewer than Chicago's 31, but more than Boston's six. Now, Metro would not comment about the lawsuits. As far as the injuries are concerned in comparing transit systems, Metro said that is, quote, not instructive because different transit systems have different issues and different problems. Now, one more thing that's worth pointing out, the woman who will be filing that lawsuit tomorrow on behalf of that passenger also represented two of the victims from 2009's fatal Metro crash. Live in Northwest D.C., Chris Pabst, ABC 7 News.